Hello, we're back after four days off. Welcome back to this Dorking Wanderer story with me, Daniel. It's the end of season eight and we'll be going through our usual end of season review today, talking about the summer, the deals we want to make, the sort of players and changes that will be going around the squad. We'll have our end of season player of the year, though. We'll, of course, have the result from last year's 1-2 and we'll just get back to normal action today as we prepare for another season in League One. As you saw in the last episode a few days back now, we just about met our season expectations and managed to keep our job by the skin of our teeth. Now, now things are looking very good again so we are going to prepare for next season and we know we've got to get a playoff place. That's going to make things far more difficult for us. We're still a small side reputation wise in this league. We're still ground sharing with Crawley. We've not got a great deal going for us. We've got to try and get back up to that level. But firstly of course we have been off for a few days. A massive thank you for everyone that's been catching up with the videos. We should be back to a relatively normal service now but of course it's a little bit weird at the moment. I work in the NHS. I've shown you in the community thread what's been going on the last few days. But for now we're back with Dorking Wanderers and we've got to reflect on that season 8 which finished a few days back now. So if you're as glad we're back as I am then please do put a thumbs up on the video I really do appreciate the support if you're new to the channel and haven't already subscribe for daily FM20 content from two long term stories the head coach will make its return tomorrow and we'll be back as normal for the weekend now as hopefully we've got two exciting transfer windows to come, one from each story, this one we're preparing for a promotion charge in League 1 trying to get a younger regenerated squad of permanent players at Dorking and in the head coach we've got to rebuild with Salford City and been relegated all the way down to League One again. So let's get started with Dorking Wanderers and we'll start in the way we normally do. Go and have a look at our squad and see the plans for the end of the season. Which ones we'll be letting go. What we think the squad's going to look like next year. And also go for our end of season bits and bobs. So we've got the overall best 11. Four players coming in today. Matt Smith, the left back. He's obviously the one that moved on in January. So well done to him. Callum Dalton, Mark King and Jonathan Mitchell. Two of those were loans expiring. They won't be here next year. Though Jonathan Mitchell's become first choice keeper now. Overtaking Fergal Hale Brown from the first couple of years. He's retired now, that's a bit of a shame. Seems to happen quite a lot in this game. But let's move along the end of season awards. The fan player of the season is Stefan Moles. We'll see if you agree later on in the episode. There will be a link to vote for your player of the year in the eye above. So make sure you come and check that one out and have your say. Then we'll announce the results in next season's one, just as well as announce our season's vote today. In terms of the season review, we did pretty much as expected. One of the first times in this series we haven't overachieved. But of course, we've got a very ambitious board and they are trying to push us a little bit here. Our attendance not great as we're playing away from home. Crawley is still a bit of a trek. They're still a pretty small club as are we. So we've not really got the facilities there. We've got one of the least players used in League One. We've had some great results. I mean, we beat Ipswich on the road. They're the sort of games we're talking about. Got to the third round of the FA Cup. We have had a few little runs this year. But unfortunately, the leasing.com trophy was the one that got away in a quarter final losing to Spurs 23s but we're at a side of 2019 we're not going to worry too much Fabio Lopez playing abroad we've got Kevin Kavanagh down in non-league there's a few players playing overseas actually and most of them have retired though Paul Konchesky I completely forgot he was here at the start back in season one we had him they're the sort of things you forget but either way a few of those players still playing and an awful lot of them now unfortunately retired but looking at the club vision for next year this is what we were talking about we've got to reach the playoffs next season we've got a huge problem at the moment as well we're due to fail financial fair play with two and a half grand over on the wage budget and that means we can't actually make signings at the moment every time you go to put in a bid you can only pay 160 quid a week if we try to bid for a transfer let me just go and show you i'll just do it on matt smith as an example you can't actually make the offer it's grayed out you can't do anything about it so we've got to address that first maybe we have to pay players off release them six weeks early from their contract but that's something we've got to sort out soon otherwise we're going to be so far behind in the transfer window but the dynamics update things looking good there the end of season meeting we'll just go and talk to them and say we want to reach the playoffs next season the injury report not so good this year though it is a lot of the youngsters who had the main knocks otherwise we've not had a huge amount here just a lot of players with three or four week knocks you see the likes of Niall John Matthew Smith Dimitri Sears there as well Trafford the backup keeper Jake Gallagher is going to be retiring anyway but then Simons as well with a couple of weeks they all just had one or two games out but unfortunately Unfortunately, they were at crucial stages of the season and the international breaks are the things that have cost us more. So the lads are on a break for six weeks. Now they're back on the 21st of June, just before the fixtures announcement, of course, for the new season. And a few teams look like they're coming down from the championship, but we'll go through the English pyramid in a moment. And you'll see the sides that we'll be facing next year and why it's going to be so tough for us to get in the top six. 
But on to our squad, of course. Let's go and have a look at them. We've still got the 11 selected from the final game of the season. If we get rid of them, we'll put them in appearance order. We, of course, didn't have a quick look at our best players of the season. So we'll do that, and then we'll talk about the ones that should be leaving. So let's go through them one by one. In terms of appearances, Calvin Ramsey top. He's wanted, and to be honest, he's our top paid player. He may be the candidate of the one we have to sell. If we can get big money for him, then we'll take it this summer. Just try and get a bounty of money in for lung players. And then hopefully we can get three or four on free agent deals as there seems to be a bit more to choose from in that market this year. The other reason I'm not so worried about right back, we'll talk in a moment, but up there in appearances, Dalton there, a little bit disappointing early on, but did find form later in the season. Mitchell with 50, added John King and Stefan Moles, so many crucial players throughout the year. John King made it to 22 goals in the end. At the end of season, Rush again got him to 20 in the league, but his loan ends and he will be going this summer. Same for Dalton, who's behind him on nine. Jack Nolan on eight, he's one of the highest paid players, probably someone else we've got to think about selling to. His wage doesn't reflect his quality and we have to get rid of him as a result. Dimitri C are unhappy but he applies the same way. He's a backup player earning nearly three grand a week and then Matt Everett is one who will probably survive it. He's earning less than Nolan and has performed just as well. But on to assists we've got a couple in double figures. Max Dodd who's out on loan of course. One that we've got to look at about next season. Will he be involved in the squad or not? Probably depends on the formation we play. Callum Dalton top of the assist chart. Matt Everett behind him on eight and then everyone else is four or below. McKinnon and Moles top of that list and they're two of the better performers for this season. In fact the two best in terms of average rating. Dan Reed was next but he barely played a game so Dalton and King were the stars of the regular players and Simons came into his own later in the year as well so it will make the player of the season vote a bit tougher. But you can see the four players I've selected in the eye above and there's another field in case you want to pick somebody else. So have your say. Please do go and vote. Let me know down in the comments why you voted for the person you have and if it's not someone I've gone for then tell me why of course. In the meantime, I can reveal last season's player of the year vote was the first tie we've had of the series. It was Callum Dalton who was joint top with Stefan Moles, both of them getting three votes apiece, a couple of the others getting one or two, but those were the two who stood out most of all. So well done to them two, they're going to be our first joint winners. Now this season, they're both going to be in the running again, but it doesn't look like either of them have performed as well. Moving on though, I've also done the usual annual thing. All of the players that I think will be moving on from the squad this year, ones that we think will be selling, loaning out, or maybe will just be taken out of our hands. So these are the players that we think we're going to have to replace in the squad, basically. So Jack Walker, probably the only loanee I'm going to try and keep on. He's not agreed yet, but we are going to put in a bid for him. The others, I can't accept it. They're all earning more money. We can't afford it, really. And to be honest, they've not really performed quite as well, whereas Jack Walker's been the glue in our centre-half partnership. But James Trafford, the third-choice keeper, will move on. The idea being that Harry Campbell's taken a lower deal. He'll become third choice. Jonathan Mitchell back up with a superstar in goal. But of course, that's been really hard to organise the last couple of years. Mitchell's the club captain as well. We've got to remember that. So a couple of bits of info we've got to be wary of if we do take that approach. So it may need to be an experienced keeper again if we sell him on. But is that going to be easy to get? Are they going to want too much money? All of those things are a bit unpredictable at present. But the three loanies that have been stars for the last two years, Dalton, John King and Mark King moving on. Hopefully some of them will go back and either be transfer listed or loan listed by their clubs. If they're transfer listed we can bring them in, try and get them in though we'll have competition and I'm not sure that we'll be the top of the choice for most players as we just haven't got that reputation as a club yet despite three years now in League One. But of course we mentioned Dimitri Sia as well. He wants to leave the club and won't sign a new deal. So that means both of our strikers are going. Manny Cook will come back from loan. But we still need two top quality strikers in place there. So that's probably going to be the hardest bit of business to do this summer. We haven't physically got anyone there. So we have to prioritise it. And the two backup wingers, Jack Nolan and Tom Cook, they'll both be on their bike as well. Tom Cook unhappy, he's out of contract. Jack Nolan earning so much and not performing that well. We've got to move him on too. David Aitchison, and the youngster, he'll go out on loan. Joe White out a contract barely got a game in the end Jack Gallagher retiring of course but he wasn't near the squad to start with and then Max Dodd he'll be one that moves on to not someone that we're particularly keen on selling but he may well be loaned out again he just hasn't quite got the quality in League One and in the last two I've picked because I don't think we're going to be able to keep them Calvin Ramsey of course would be first choice right back but I reckon we could get someone as good on lower wages and I think we're going to get big big money for him so don't forget we signed him for about 170 grand I'm hoping we can move him on to something a bit closer to what Hibbs sold him for. Hibbs bought him, sorry, for 950,000. Barely played a game there before coming to us. A massive loss for them, but he's done well for us. So I'd imagine he might get some interest from Scotland again. There's a few teams sniffing around in the SPL. Was it Aberdeen and Queen of the South? Dundee 
United and Queen of the South. They're two clubs in the Premiership. They're going to chase them and hopefully they'll put in big offers for him. And then Dan Reed is the other one that's a bit interesting. I do want to change our midfield shape next year. So rather than three central midfielders, I'd like to have a number 10 instead of one of them. And Dan Reed would be a candidate for that. But we've already got bids in for a couple of youngsters, ones that are going to potentially be better than him already. So as a result, we'll either loan him out, sell him if we get an offer, or maybe he'll just stay as our backup. But he's another one that I can't guarantee on keeping. And we are planning to replace his position in the squad. But Joe White definitely won't be here. So if one of the two stays, it will be Dan Reed. But I can't promise so far, although he did perform well. But that's largely in the lower league teams in the Carabao and Checker Trade Trophy. I'm aware I've got the sponsorship wrong again. Of course, it's the leasing.com. But Dan Reed is someone that we don't know about, really. I'm hoping few of these youngsters will get some offers in. You can see the likes of Niall John. There's interest in him. Even a few of the ones in the 23s. Oliver Deadfield, our backup keeper. He's someone that's had some interest too. So I'm really hoping we can bring in a bit of money for reserve players this year, even if it does mean we lose out on future potential. And that will obviously resolve the biggest problem at the club, which has traditionally been finances. It just nosedives every time we haven't got a window open. We obviously had a little bit of takeover news in the last few months, trying to get a bit of money injected into the club. But otherwise, the balance will hemorrhage as we're playing away from home. We're not bringing in as much on match days. We're still a smaller reputation club than the wages we're paying. So I'm making a concerted effort to reduce the wage bill, getting loan players who are perhaps on lower wages at their clubs. So don't forget these three that we've had over the last couple of years, taking aside Walker, they were all on low wages the first year. The second year, we had to pay double or treble the amount to keep them. And it's just caught up with us, as you can see. Financial fair play failed. We've also had a couple of stages where we've not been able to make transfers. And we're not willing to have that this summer at all. So we're just going to try and sell on as many as we can. But the stars will stay here. They will be involved. We'll give them new contracts where it's reasonable. And hopefully we'll have a good squad to compete next year. And we'll be back visiting that in the next episode, which of course will be our summer transfer special. But of course, before we conclude this episode, there is one more thing we have to do. The same that we always do in this series. Probably my favourite bit is going through at the end of the year and seeing how the clubs have performed in other competitions. What the English football pyramid looks like. Of course, we've had some shocks and some entertainment along the way. Our third round FA Cup opponents this year, Nottingham Forest, have been the entertainers. There's been a few that have moved by three or four leagues. Some shocks in cups as well. So let's go and skip ahead to the end of June. OK, we're back for the end of season competitions review. We're having a look across England. I'm just a little bit distracted here by Brighton's injury list. Everyone else has got one or two. They've got 12. Where on earth have they managed to get 12 injuries from? Jeez, look at that squad. Firstly, how are they 11th in the league with the likes of holding one Bazaka Butland? Some decent players in that squad. Naby Keita as well. I know they're all probably ageing a little bit now. We're 10 years in. We're probably talking about players all in their 30s. 34, 29, 31. I guess that sort of explains it. But how many injuries can you see there? I've never seen anything like that in the off-season. It's not even an international summer really in England or Europe. So it's only a couple of the South Americans that have gone away and a couple of the African tournaments too. So that's really a bit bizarre to have that many. That must be the most unlucky I've seen in this series. So no players complaining about injury here. That's the worst we've seen. But in terms of the Premier League, West Ham relegated alongside Wolves and Swansea. Wolves and West Ham obviously doing well at the start of the series. But they're both dropping down to the Championship now. Liverpool champions, the second time that's happened in this career. Of course, in real life, we don't even want to talk about that at the moment. Plenty of controversy going on there. But the top seven, pretty much as you'd expect. Everton leapfrogging above Spurs by 11 points but otherwise it's the seven teams we'd probably expect to be there in terms of the championship let's move down Burnley won the playoff final to return to the Premier League Huddersfield back as champions by 11 points Brentford in second place behind them Sunderland back to League One Wigan and Coventry joining them too Coventry down by 14 points in the end 16 sorry to my beloved Luton Town they're in 21st and survive at this level so that's the main thing we'll take out of this season in League One we of course know what happened but we have got some big sides coming down with us there so we're going to be in League One next season and have Coventry, Wigan and Sunderland there. Three sides that are far bigger than us in reputation. But I guess two of the ones that have gone up, Barnsley and Sheffield Wednesday, both fall into that category too. Chesterfield going up with them. Don't forget the side that came up from the National League with us a few years back. They're now going to play in the Championship. So that's certainly the aspiration we've got. Almost like FM19 with Torquay, there always seems to be one club that comes through the league with us. In that year, it was Maidstone from the National League South to League One. And in this one, it's of course Chesterfield who back to the Championship. Championship. So well done to them for that movement. 
As you can see, the likes of Charlton, Portsmouth, Rotherham, Bolton, Lincoln all stay down. Ipswich below us in mid-table too. So, so many big sides next season. How are we supposed to finish in the top six? Budget-wise, we're not going to be able to compete. It's going to be a very difficult summer. And hopefully, we'll be able to get a decent squad in. Otherwise, it's going to be a very, very long year. But we won't be playing Port Vale, Scunthorpe, Peter Brawl, Bun, K Dons. All of them have been relegated to League 2. Scunthorpe, of course, the side we've managed in our other series, the head coach. Peter Brawl, a side who should be doing better, really. Into League 2, who have we got there? Walsall joining us in League 1, narrowly beating Tranmere in the playoff final. Of course, our football podcast has got a bit of an affinity with Tranmere. We've done a couple of live vlogs from brilliant games of theirs. So they're in the eye above if you want to catch up with them. A shameless plug in the middle, I know. And then Plymouth, Carlisle and Wickham coming up too. So three sides we've got to be looking to beat next month. As Salford, our current side in the head coach, it's a different world there, isn't it? We're disappointed in that series we're going down to League 1. The inevitable when we took over, to be honest. And here they're going back down to non-league football, joined by Sutton United in the National League next year. And the teams that are going up there, Ebbs Fleet beating Orient in the final, Boston United winning the league with Kevin Kavanagh at the club. So he's going to be playing in the EFL again. Well done to him for that. And in Torquay, back down to the National League South, FC United, Borenwood and Gateshead joining them next season. And then finally, the two regional leagues. Any shocks in these? I know there were a few smaller clubs there. Kidderminster and Hartlepool narrowly teetering above the edge there. Spennymore and Guiseley among the clubs getting relegated. As Telford and Chorley come back to the National League from the north. In the south, it's pretty much the same story. Well in United and Maidenhead coming up. No real shocks from those, to be honest. And then going down, Hampton and Richmond, the only bigger side. Salisbury, Chesham and Paul join them. So an interesting run through the English leagues. Let me know if there's anyone I missed out. Of course, you can pause it any stage. Any teams that are in leagues you don't expect. Let me know and we can have a deeper look into them next season if need be. What happened to Nottingham Forest, the entertainers? They were obviously in mid-table because we just skipped past them. 16th in the championship. They beat us in the FA Cup. In the Carabao Cup, though, they went out early. And in the FA Cup, they went out quarter-final stage. Lost at home to United comfortably. So nothing really exciting from them again this year. So it looks like the entertainers have stopped doing it now. But let's move on to the Cups before we finish off. Chelsea beat Leicester in the FA Cup final. Back-to-back -back title wins for them in that competition. In the Carabao Cup, it was Arsenal in extra time. The first time they've won that in this whole series. And then down to the Community Shield. That was Chelsea again for the second year in a row. The Leasing.com trophy, Portsmouth won it. So four years in a row we've had under 23 sides since my beloved Luton Town won it five years back. But Portsmouth have joined the party now, doing it for the proper sides. They're the League One team and another one we've got to compete against next year. In the FA Trophy finally, Swindon beat Dartford. Swindon still stuck down in the National League mid-table, but they have got a good competition record in this one. They've had one final defeat and they've won it this year as well. Interestingly, Craig McGinty, one of the top scorers in that competition. He's been a player for us in the past, of course. But finally, let's go and look at the European competitions. So the Champions League's first. PSG won it. Who did they beat in the final? We're too late for the preliminary. So we've got to go back to last season's and find out. So the 2027 final was won in extra time. Two minutes from the end by PSG. An all-European final there. So that's really good there. We've seen too much English dominance in that one. So I'm glad to see a bit of realism. PSG getting a competition there. In the Europa League, Liverpool got to the final, but they were beaten by Bayern Munich. Why that was played on a Thursday night, I'm not quite sure. Normally it's Wednesday for the final, but Thursday there for Bayern Munich, and they get a win over the English side. And then finally onto the Europa Conference. Who won that one? Everton, keeping it alive for the English side. And another Scottish team in the final. Hearts losing out 1-0 on this occasion. How many times has that happened though? Hearts have won it before. Aberdeen have won it. Everton beating Hearts in the final again here. It looks like the Scottish League's become and a very good one. Some top players there worth £10 million or so. So well done Scottish football making its way back up. I've just found an FM19 hero there as well. Rowan McDonald. We had him at Torquay on various occasions. What a player he was for us in that one. And he seems to be making big strides in this series. So maybe we'll meet him in the future. Who knows? But that's our review of the English pyramid for this season. And of course the European competitions that are affected too. I'll just go and have a look and see who won the SPL. Oh Celtic for the first time in four years. Rangers had made it back to the top of the game and the top of the pyramid in Scotland but Celtic have retrieved it this season so Celtic back on top in Scotland still staying with the old firm clubs though despite the others doing well in the Europa Conference but Rowan McDonald a nice name to see there and I'm sure Hearts will be a threat in that competition next season too but for us that's a big season for us we kept our job in the end despite some disappointment and we've seen the risks of prioritising the Cups this year the fact that it can cause big problems in the league and we almost lost our job as a result of it so no wonder managers 
just don't play more first teams in a cup. But for us, we're going to be back with a big transfer special in two days. They're already recorded, so the next three episodes will be on time. The head coach makes his return tomorrow. The big summer transfer window in that one too. So we'll have two transfer specials, back-to-back -back days. Hopefully it'll make up for the fact there's not much professional football this weekend. So please do stick a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments what you think we should do this summer. Any players that I should move on that I didn't put in my list. Any players that you think I shouldn't be selling in a million years. But of course we've got to bear finances in mind. So think about that when you're giving us the responses. But a massive thanks for watching. It's really good to be back. I'm delighted that we're back on our normal schedule for now as well. The voice is just starting to creak so that might be the next problem. I'll be sounding like Sean Dyche again within two or three days. But if you have got any reservations to my tactical plans next year please do let me know in the comments. My plan's very simple really. It's just going to be that in essence. And of course we'll adapt a few of the roles as well. But hopefully give us more, a bit more attacking potency without losing that good defensive record we've had most of this year. And that should be the thing that lifts us towards the playoffs providing we can get some more consistent players in if you haven't already subscribe to the channel for daily fm20 content from my two long-term stories this one will be back on monday we'll have a big transfer special at dorking wanderers as we mentioned probably 12 or 13 moving on hopefully seven or eight good players coming in and then a couple coming back from loans that look really good so in our development center at the moment we've got some players in the 23s mason saxon being the star one he's coming back from loan and improving so quickly and he helped take Epps fleet up to league two of course nine goals from right back looks a really good player so he could be the calvin ramsey replacement there and then there's a few others that have got high potential in that team so we could have a bit of a regeneration this summer so hopefully that'll be the case make sure you come and join me on monday to find out in the meantime the head coach is back tomorrow plenty of transfer news in that one loads of players leaving as we get relegated we've got no saying transfers or contracts but we have got to redo the budgets so i'm guessing that the director of football will be busy and replacing a large portion of our squad Finally, I'm part of a football podcast that does match day vlogs, interviews and a new light-hearted series, You Are The Ref, as well. That's quite an interactive one, so check out the channel in the eye above. There's a link to the match day vlogs playlist initially, but then from there you can find all the other series too, as we talk about the most serious and light-hearted things. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support of the series. I really do appreciate your patience over the last week. I'm glad to be back and hopefully the schedule will remain consistent now, although of course there may be the odd day where that wavers. But this one will be back on Monday for the big transfer special. I hope to see you there for that one. And how much regeneration will there be? I predict it's going to be a pretty busy window.